Hi guys, it's still August 4, 2021. Flooding, fires. It continues every single day, but this Dixie fire and the river fire in California has brought about an awful lot of destruction. Dixie fire. The flames wiped out the center of the historic town of Greenville yesterday. The fire, now the eighth largest in California history, is one of more than a dozen large wildfires burning there. Jonathan Bigliotti is in Colfax at the fast-growing River Fire. Jonathan, good morning. And good morning to you. We're standing in a neighborhood that appears to be completely destroyed. Home after home looks like this one, reduced to rubble. The river fire started yesterday afternoon. It quickly exploded to 1,400 acres. North of where we are is the Dixie Fire. It's about 200 times the size of this one and growing by the hour. The flames of the Dixie Fire gutted the entire town of Greenville, California. Homes, stores, and gas stations burned to the ground. The fire is on the move, exploding to about 20,000 acres in a single day. It's now covering 278,000 acres and 35% contained. It's okay once you get past that. Firefighters struggled to drive through smoke as strong winds and the dry vegetation and brush are fueling the fire. Residents are packing up. Most difficult part, I guess, is just not knowing what, what's happening and where it's at. It's just, you know, it just explodes so fast. You just don't have time to react with anything. More than three hours away, people in Placer and Nevada counties are leaving their homes because of the river fire, some with just the clothes on their backs. Shaking like a leaf, but uh, it's okay. I've got my family together, and that's what's important. Flames created fireballs like this one and damaged as many as 45 buildings. Firefighters worked to create brake lines with bulldozers to prevent more damage. Right up the canyon in the trees and all of the brush. I'm just concerned that tomorrow I might not have one. Right. Okay. Well, I think at this point that should be everybody's concern. Um... Okay, this is the wrong one. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's the right one. I posted this video earlier, and I received... Um, sorry. Hang on. I'm not doing okay. So, I just wanted to post this video. Um... showing you some uh, uh, channel that appears to be uh, keeping a very close watch on the fires. Oh, yeah. Asked map of the mega region reshaping. I will link below 10 emerging mega regions. Um, But this, if anyone needs help, I'm in the area. If you need food, water, or shelter, anything, please reach out. Our house is fine. The fire is going in an opposite direction. Yay. <laughs> I love reading those kinds of comments. So grateful and humbled. Thank you. Um, those of you in this area, if you do need help, reach out. Here's another one. I got land too. I will help folks. RVs, tent camping can reach out to me. We can occupy the land here. Reach out. Okay. Very good. There's a lot of people being evacuated. So this is the channel. Uh, streamed live 10 hours ago. It's eight and a half hours. Catherine Davidson, Wildfires. She is in the area. I'll let you listen to just a few minutes. I, uh, I don't know where to begin, folks. I'm so sorry that I meant here to be at seven. I've just been struggling with technical difficulties, internet connection issues, and 
and was struggling to compose myself for a little bit. Um, we, we, we've lost the downtown of Greenville. Now this exploded today and I, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. The, the images coming out of, of Twitter and such are just so heartbreaking. I, I can't, I struggle to, to even describe how I feel. Um, I've made personal uh, emergency calls to my relatives in the area, and so far they're okay, but they're um, getting ready to leave and evacuate, uh, or have already done so. I, um, the nightmare's coming true. Uh, today's been such a bad day for fire, even, even worse than I imagined it was going to be. So we, we have apparently lost the, ground, the downtown of Greenville um, and many structures. And I, I can't believe what we're seeing. Uh, here the firefighters are, are going into Plumas Bank, and uh, that's where they're accepting donations for the victims. And um, that's, that's the interior has burned. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, SoCal Fire Photo Courtesy. Um, that person is, is there, and, uh, and the fire swept through the town. Um, so we also have the new fire that, um, has, uh, meant that Colfax has been evacuated in Placer County. Um, Placer County has been affected. Uh, Lassen County has mandatory evacuations and I, I can't make, make it work that I was just trying to do. I was trying to put a scrolling evacuation warning because there's so many, um, it's going to be hard to just constantly talk, uh, about them. So I just, I think I'll just go ahead and read it, uh, what I was attempting to type here. Um, I've been okay. The links will be below, but you know, just looking at this, did you notice how yet another house leveled and I'll try to find this on Twitter. Hang on. Here it is. What? This is so dry. You have had drought conditions. You know, some people argue, well, the trees are filled with moisture. Really? What about that drought? But look at this. I mean, and the fence, it still, it, it, it somehow just took down the house, leveled it, but all of the trees around it, fine. Make a difference. It is, it is very um, heartbreaking and, and rather demoralizing to see this and to see it happen now pretty much on a regular basis to see all the people who have had their homes gutted and then you see the anomalies and you try to get through to people and you just can't I, I was reading comments underneath the video I posted just earlier and people leaving comments who live in this area trying to get through to people about what is really occurring and they can't they just so I'll link below to this Twitter page as well because it seems pretty up to date about what is taking on uh, taking place So, what is also interesting is the Greenville fire, um, town of Greenville. They were evacuated and then brought back. The evacuation was lifted. And then suddenly there's a fire again. And they're having to leave immediately because the fire is just exploding, okay? I mean, that should really raise eyebrows. So this woman here, I was listening to this stream, and 
She has a lot of very good information that she is putting out for people in this area. Another one uh, streamed 109 minutes ago. Greenville is gone. Okay, but she's giving out information regarding evacuation routes and so any of you in the area, you might want to subscribe to Katherine Davidson Wildfires. Here's her channel, which I will link to below. So she's right in this area and is getting a lot of information from uh, several sources that a whole lot of us can't. This is the Dixie Fire. I mean, it's so... I can't imagine what these firefighters are feeling. I, I, they must be like, first of all, they're definitely dealing with different fires. So it'd be interesting. Maybe they've all had to sign a confidentiality agreement. But, you know, considering how many fires are taking place, these firefighters, are they even getting a break? Okay, well, California wildfire insurance increases. Across California, homeowners are preparing for what could be another long wildfire season. What many say they weren't prepared for were steep insurance premium increases or being dropped from their insurance coverage altogether. ABC 10 News reporter Adam Rakusin takes a look at what options homeowners have and how the state is responding. Well, these companies, they browbeat you into consolidating all of your insurance needs under them. And then they can cherry pick what they want out of that, but you're then at risk. Up until about two weeks ago, Bob Watkins lived in an area that got its fair share of fires, but nothing too major until 2018. The West Fire in Alpine burned hundreds of acres and dozens of homes. While his home was safe, Bob says a year after that, his insurance company dropped him. That we were now in a high risk area and that they were no longer going to write policies for that area. As the state's dealt with years of record fire damage, Bob's story is not unique. Some insurance companies have cut back on what they're willing to cover in fire-prone areas or increase prices due to risk. We are in the middle of a crisis of sorts. Amy Bach is the executive director of United Policyholders. It's a consumer organization that deals with insurance. She says there's a few factors driving prices, including climate change and new technology. Those tools tend to overstate risk, right? They tend to uh, basically scare insurers um, to the point where, uh, you know, they're just trying to, to run away. If people can't get insurance for their homes, they can't get a mortgage. And they, can't, they can lose their homes if they lose insurance and can't find it any place. That's right. That's also the point here. If you can't get fire insurance or you can't, uh, afford it, what are you going to do? You can't get a mortgage? You lose your mortgage? It, there are so many different tools that they are using to drive people away from areas that they don't want them to be in. And yes, this is a reality. The gray area, they don't want people in these gray areas. Now, you know, whether the reshaping uh, takes on the exact uh, geographics as this, 
It may not. But mega regions are coming about. The Texas Triangle is known throughout the world to be a powerhouse triangle. You know, and in all of these places, you're going to see rents that will have already skyrocketed, but they're going to just continue to increase. What are the many ways in which they're using to get people out of these gray areas? Flooding, tornadoes, fires, impoverishment, economic impoverishment. You know, if everybody knew what was going on, would it change anything? I wonder. I wonder. Because I know a lot of awake people who are only concerned about themselves, not doing anything in this fight. So maybe it wouldn't even change anything. Well, um... more f flooding has been taking place into this creek it's hard to believe though that last thursday night and friday morning this little tiny creek was actually above this bridge and the end result was obviously horrific how did it happen we put down essentially a month and a half's worth of rain in two hours and that happened here in carlisle we knew going into last thursday night that somebody somewhere around was going to get a lot of rain there was a tropical air mass in place what we did not know exactly was where that was going to end up being and it still ended up being pretty scattered around the area but it was all focused here in Carlisle. So we knew going in that there was going to be some heavy rain. At around midnight, we had our answer as to where it was going to be. It was Carlisle, and it will be forever changed. Calvin Denton is Carlisle's emergency manager. Decided I'd go out on the front porch and just look, see you know, how it was doing. Well, I go out and look, and I said, well, it's really coming down. Well, that was probably quarter to 12, something like that. And then about, like I said, about 10 minutes after 12, dispatch called me and said, we've got water coming off of Walnut Street onto East Main Street, and it's about a foot deep. The National Weather Service knows Brushy That's Fork Creek and Carlisle can be a flood zone. Brushy Fork is one. I'm sorry. I can't listen to these people. I just can't listen to it. You know, they come up with the most asinine reasons uh, for this flash flooding. And she says, oh, well, flash flooding, it comes quickly and it leaves quickly. All right, well, when you know about the technology that man has to create all of this devastation, all of this destruction, first of all, no one can come up with any definitive answer which is perfect for those who are creating all of this. So many people just go with, oh, it's Mother Nature or it's climate change. You know, there are so many military documents that state weather modification. Well, our U.S. Uh, military documents say they will be using weather modification uh, for domestic and um, international security or domestic and foreign security it's not security it's destruction and if people would just look into it you know, maybe i i don't know i i i i honestly have given up hope on humanity at this point um what is this? I think this is the Utah flooding. No, Detroit, FEMA, listen to this. Relief is being promised to Detroiters severely impacted by extreme flooding from recent storms. Today, Mayor Mike Duggan held a press conference with FEMA to stress that a denial of a claim may not be a final answer. Seven Action News reporter Simon Shaquette has the crucial info meant to help people in the Detroit area recover. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan is adamant that a denial of a FEMA claim can happen for a variety of reasons and filing an appeal could still result in you getting financial assistance. If you get that first um, uh, letter that says you're not eligible, 
Uh, we're going to talk about it because in many cases they need more information and you can still get the grant. Speaking Isn't that interesting? You get a denial letter. You're not eligible for assistance. And they count on those people to just end pursuing assistance. Oh, they want more information? Well, why don't they send out letters like that? Why can't people see what's going on here? I, I boggles the mind. Just keep applying, just keep applying, just keep applying. That's the process. That's the government to pr process. You know, the, the, thousands of homes flooded. Why? Sewage backup. Drainage problems. It's not the fault of the homeowners. It's the fault of the city. It's the fault of uh, those who are being paid with tax dollars to maintain all of that infrastructure. But then the people who are paying for that maintenance get destroyed. Sorry, denied assistance. Now I understand FEMA is federal. Okay, but this is, this, this happened. I've known people, you know, uh, one in particular a subscriber who had lived through the Harvey flood, not because of the rain, but because of the Army Corps of Engineers releasing the reservoirs that flooded her home along with tens of thousands of homes. And the hell that she went through to get some assistance from FEMA It's, it's unbelievable. This is the Utah flooding. Ah, yes. How many times have we seen this? Utah, Detroit, all over the country, increasingly so for years. Every year, it just increases, increases, and oh, all this backup into people's homes, flooding them out. flood prone areas could see much higher flood insurance rates that's according to a new research group we've also learned that some of the rates could quadruple our consumer reporter heather sullivan joining us live tonight with some smart sense for homeowners heather good evening fema just released a new online tool to help better and more specifically predict a home's flood risk they're also going to release new flood maps later this year but that has many homeowners worried that their new flood insurance rates could drown them. A report by research group First Street Foundation suggests hundreds of thousands of U.S. homeowners could face major rate hikes for flood insurance phased in over time, including in greater Houston. Sometimes it's as much as four times higher um, as, as people are currently paying. And so it, it is a sort of a wake-up call that as reform is being brought to the National Flood Insurance Program. That reform includes FEMA launching a new tool called Risk Rating 2.0, Equity in Action, 
which is more specific about each home's risk. You look at a property by property basis, you can really look at those homes that happen to be you know, at a low elevation near a creek. Rates will go up for some and down for some. New National Flood Insurance Plan rates will take effect for new policyholders October 1st, and after that for existing policyholders when their plan renews. The Government Accountability Office released a report calling on Congress to consider requiring FEMA to evaluate how its new flood risk information could be used to determine which property should be required to have flood insurance. What we have seen more and more as in, in more recent flood events is that many people outside of special flood hazard areas have had flooding. FEMA says it agrees, and it's important to note mandatory purchase requirements pertain to certain property owners in special flood hazard areas. However, Risk Rating 2.0 is a ratings methodology for National Flood Insurance Program premiums. The Texas Insurance Council points out some private insurance companies now offer flood insurance. So you are wise to shop around. Uh, see who can offer you the best flood insurance rate. Remember, your flood insurance is not part of your home insurance. It is a separate insurance policy. So and I'll link below. Um, you can check it out. Snow in Peru. Pff. Bolivia and Peru. Unbelievable. Snow also in Brazil. So, um, a lot is happening, guys, and unfortunately, a whole lot is not good. Yeah, really? Bolivia? Peru? Yeah, man's not good doing this. It's all climate change. I can't stop thinking about you guys. I hope, I really hope that none of you have to suffer the consequences of what is happening. You know, But if you do, I really hope that you have family, friends, you get the support you need, you get the help you need. The links are below.